also the Global Tel Link prepaid call from Shotgun features during this call. Thank you for using Global Tel Link. Hello? Hey, hello. But anyway, uh, where do you want to start at? Well, um, I actually want to start a little, you know, back in time. Okay. Back in time. Um, because I wanted to kind of like build up to, you know, the situation that you're in right now. Yeah, I understand. Okay. So, um, I have like some questions, but it's not going to be all like totally scripted we might get off course or we might end up talking no, about no, other things you know what i mean right 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 you know that you understand that it might take a while to get the interview done so okay. 15 minutes go quickly yeah that's what i'm saying that's why i said i know it's going to take us some phone calls to get through the interview so okay. i'm cool with that okay so where do you want where do you, where, where do you want me to uh well first oh, of all uh, first of all let's um just discuss the uh the reason why you're in jail and the exact charges that you are in jail for? Of course. Well, I'm in jail, and uh, the first charge is first degree rape. Uh, the second one is first degree burglary, and the last one is oral sodomy. Okay, okay. And did this happen in Oklahoma? Yes. Where uh, you're based I got, at? Uh, in trouble in 2009. Matter of okay. fact, it was right after my birthday. Oh, okay. Right after your birthday? Okay. Yeah. And was it somebody you knew? Yeah, and it's that crazy thing. You know, I met her, uh, I was working for a tip service, and I was at this laundry company, and I met her there, and you know how that goes. You, you meet somebody, they, you find out they smoke dope, and uh, uh, birds of a feather flock together, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's right. You did say you had um, started using drugs. Which drug was you using? Well, I started out as, you know, as a youngster, you know, just like normal people smoking cigarettes and uh, smoking marijuana, which I really never smoked a lot of marijuana. Then in uh, 2006 is when I really kind of uh, got wild because at first, you know, for a long time I was smoking crack. Mm-hmm. And then I discovered that crack was trash and I started smoking uh, meth. That's where the demons came out. Oh, yeah. Okay. I can understand that. So, what age did you start smoking drugs? Because you're from Omaha. Actually, I never did any drugs until I went to the military, to be honest with you. I never smoked a cigarette, weed, nothing. Oh, never okay. Never drank, never done anything. Until okay. I went to the military at 19. Okay. So, so it was in Omaha when you first started doing drugs? Before you moved to yeah, Oklahoma? Well, like I, no, I was, I, I was overseas at that time. I really, I really started uh, picking up a cigarette, uh... Uh, after boot camp because I got stationed in San Diego and uh, just out with the guys started doing what they were doing drinking and uh, smoking a little weed mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't nothing heavy I, like I told you I didn't do nothing heavy until later on in my life but probably about 2000 I want to say 1 is when I started start out snorting cocaine first and then I went from there to graduate to smoking it Oh, okay, okay. And did your did your parents know that you were doing drugs when well, you were in the military? Yeah, I remember, I always lived my own lifestyle, and, I, and plus my lifestyle was different and alternate to my parents' lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So I never really involved myself with what they had it going on. Mm-hmm. My mom didn't know nothing about me doing drugs until I caught uh, in two thousand seven. I caught that possession of crack cocaine case. Oh, I went to okay. drug court for a year for that. Okay, and she probably wasn't too happy about that, being that you were raised in church and all that, yeah. But, you know. Okay, okay. So, um, as far as, like, you growing up in church, though, um, was there something that happened that kind of led you on the path of drugs, or was it just... Let me be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And like I was trying to explain to you earlier, you know how you you have a, a... You know who you are and what kind of person you are, but, uh, you know... My mother is a pastor, and she's worried about her image. Ever since I was about nine years old, I knew I was gay. You know, I liked the guy. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't socially accepted in my family, which you know, you know my family, because mm-hmm. you went to church with me. Right. So that wasn't something you could just jump out there and speak on. And plus, there was no advocate for young gay people out in that period of time, in the early 80s and 90s. Mm-hmm. You know, we wasn't, we just started having a voice tell the early 2000s that anybody cared 
So, you know, when you when you get depressed about it, you even heard the kids, I'm pretty sure you heard all the, the young gay kids talking about this, that you feel like you left out because you, everybody makes you feel like a lesser person in society. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right. Look at all the Black Lives Matter people. Look at how the, now finally somebody want to start marching for rights, but you don't hear those, those we got to fight for everything we got. They just gave us our gay rights uh, in that Supreme Court action. Mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. this year. Yeah, you're right about that. It wasn't, the LGBT community was nothing like it used to be um, back in the day. So, yeah, a lot of people didn't, yeah, didn't believe, you know. I didn't believe in religion on their level. Mm-hmm. You know, my life was forced, religion was forced on me, which you know that better than anybody. Right, I understand we was forced to go to church a lot. Old. Mm-hmm. Well, even though church was forced on us, did you ever really like church? You know, did you ever have any fond memories of church? Or was it kind of like, I got to go because mom, you know. I never believed what they believed because it didn't line up to what I felt as who I am. How could a God be God if he hate me for who I want to be? You know, everybody says you're going to hell because you're homosexual. Everybody tells you because you want to be with a man or a girl want to be with a girl. It was a bad lifestyle you were a dehumanized mm-hmm. because you wanted to be who you naturally are as a person i believe god may be gay i don't care what nobody says and mm-hmm. people don't have to like that statement but i i know what i am and there's no way eight years old you know who you is unless that's it that was something that you felt about who you are you're gay because you know it yeah, well, you sure you sure kept it here really good because I had no idea. I always thought you was in the girls and you was the little flirt in the church. And <laughs> hey, get out of line. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. I mean, think about this. Uh-huh. If you can't force your lifestyle to people, then a lot of gay people go with the flow. I don't know if you know that or not. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. But we have the tendency to be chameleons in life because nobody wants to accept you for who you are. My cousin, he went through. Mm-hmm. I've seen all the backlash he kept getting all the time. I showed him woman had to deal with that at the time. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. So did you feel more comfortable about it once you went to the military? Because well, I know in the military well, you know, sometimes I they... I start becoming myself mm-hmm. because I'm out in California where gay, being gay is free. Mm-hmm. I went all the gay clubs. Really, that's where I started really getting into the drug scene because, you know, I was partying with those people. And, man, I'm like, this is wonderful. Ain't nobody judgmental. Nobody's uh, pointing the finger. Man, you see a man and a man walking down the street, a woman and a woman, and it was a wonderful thing of seeing people like you living your life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. So, what what made you move to Oklahoma? You went to the military, then you came back to Omaha, or did you go straight to Oklahoma? I, I, you know, I came to Omaha. Okay. I came back to Omaha. Remember, I, I was, I, that's when you had, uh, I found out you had a son. Oh, yeah, my oldest son. Mm-hmm. Yep, I remember yeah. now. Remember yeah. cause that day he, he swallowed the little... Uh, oh, my God, you remember that? Yes, it was you and Deanne. Y'all both got him and y'all he started do doing nothing. the Heimlich. Didn't do nothing. I did it. Oh. <laughs> so you will give her some credit for Oh, well, I knew it, it happened so fast. All I remember is he got candy from you, then he started choking, then people started jumping over chairs and helping yeah, him. Yeah, I threw the chair out the way, grabbed him, and picked him up. Mm-hmm. You know, the military, you learn first aid for kids and for grown ups. Oh my God, I can't remember you. Oh, I can't believe you remember that. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, I remember your son. This yeah. was a bad time. Last time I seen him was 2011. Uh, he was about six, going on 16 that year, mm-hmm. remember? Yep, yep. We were sitting at the table, and I was left giving you a hard time, you mm-hmm. know, trying to fit in. I really wasn't. That was a, not no offense not to say you're not a beautiful woman, but I really was putting on a show because, you know, my family, everybody Christian. Right, right, right. I understand. <laughs> so I had to put on a show. Huh? I, I understand. I get it. <laughs> I left, when I left y'all house, I went out and partied with my friends down in this crazy. That day, I left and went to uh, down to Kansas City, Missouri. I love it. The gate club having a good time. Oh, okay. My intention. I wasn't looking for no woman. I was on a man hunt. Oh. <laughs> so when you moved down to Oklahoma, what year was that? I came back to Oklahoma in the late 90s, 
as of 2008, after I got off of, uh, that drug court thing, it was uh, September, the end of September. Okay. And March is when I got in trouble, 2009. Okay. And did you go down there because your mom wanted you to? Because, you know, she was pastoring down there? No, I went down there because I wanted something new. I'd already done Oklahoma. I already did San Diego. uh, And uh, Tulsa has a really lively gay scene. Mm -hmm. I really have to say that. They really, even though there's the Bible something there, but as far as the gay scene, they're really, even Oklahoma City has a really lively gay scene. So Mm -hmm. it it was more... After I found that out, I was enjoying myself. Just, you know, I was just you got to I had to leave with my mom. Oh, so you yeah. didn't? So she didn't even know then when you moved down there? With... No, I was living in Owasso, Oklahoma. She was living in Bartlesville. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So when did she quite find out that she knew you was on drugs? But when did she find out that you were gay? I ain't never told my mom. She still don't know. I don't care. I don't want to. Let me say this. I'm not going to get on the phone 15 minutes to let somebody preach to me about who I should be because that's, she's worried about how it hurt. I don't want to hear what... If I can't be comfortable to talk to you and you worried about your image, your perception, mm-hmm. and how it's going to look towards you, this is my life. Why would I, why I got to listen to your perception of me? Right, right. And I'm sure I'm, you... I'm you, I know. The five cents, but she's worried about how, it, how whatever's going on me looks on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can see. I can see why you feel that way because she is a pastor, and that's you know they have an image to uphold. So yeah. Well, they mind, but here's the thing: I am 45 years old in prison on a life sentence. Now, whose life is more uh, negative or dealing with negativity? Mine or hers? I'm the one dealing with this COVID-19 I'm from behind the bars. I ain't getting no. You know they don't give me the best medical care in this facility. And, you know, you got to be careful what guy you mess with, you know, because AIDS is rampant, and even in prison. I mean, mm-hmm. it's reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't think about that stuff, though. But, well, yeah. of course, because here's the thing. Most of y'all don't know that prison is not no kill cake land. This is a violent place. Mm-hmm. And any time things can happen to where people can get stabbed, people can get beaten to death, I mean, there's a lot of certain, you know, I'm sitting up here dealing with a lot of people coming from a lot of different backgrounds. And it all it takes is one person that don't like you or your lifestyle or your choices. And so is it really as bad as the movies? Is it is or do the movies uh, does hi, do the movies hype it up, or is it really as bad as the movies? As far as no, prison, no, bad. Oh, many people get stabbed for real. I've seen, I was, I've seen guys get cut to where they they cut their whole stomach open and they intestines fell out. Oh my I've god! I've seen all they're getting decapitated. This ain't no just now on a everyday basis, depending on what facility you at, this is a call facility out of man, but where I just left from in Long, Oklahoma, oh yeah, it's real in the field over there. It changed my whole, I was over there for almost three years. I was a different animal over there. Mm-hmm. I just had things come out of me that it never was a part of my character, because I'm a non-violent guy. But man, they pushed me to where I had to do a lot of fighting this day to get people to understand, leave me alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. I know <sighs> I know it's, it's a survival. It's, I know. You really have to... Call me a fat mm-hmm. the fog, assist, any of them terminology. I'm instantly ready to go at that moment. Okay, because you, now you're talking about who I am as a person. And not only... I don't believe in picking on the weak. Mm-hmm. So, and I'm not the weak, so I'll let you know quickly. I'm not the weak. I'll beat your head in. Leave me alone, because I don't, I don't bother people. I live my own life. Take care of myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So after you after you got down to Oklahoma, you moved a little ways from your mom. Uh, what kind of relationships yeah, was, did you get involved in? Were you still kind of like messing with women, messing well, with guys? Or I just... had a friend. He was bisexual, and I was bisexual. So we kicked it. We had we knew each other. You know, she knew I dated guys, and she dated women, and mm-hmm. we kicked it with each other. And uh, she was cool, but she was a square. You know, I, I kind of didn't. Keep it with her a lot. You know, I think it more of my male friend. I, like I said, I mean, that relationship that got me in prison wasn't a relationship. We was just drug friends. We wasn't no, you know what I mean? She wasn't nobody that I was mm-hmm. kicking it with. Okay, so that's that's what I was getting at because when you told me you were gay and I know you're in jail because of something you did towards a woman, like... Hey, it's a drug, buddy. So you, know, you, you meet all kinds of mm-hmm. in, in the world of drugs. Mm-hmm. Okay. Drugs bring you around the people that you normally don't be around unless you get high. Right. I mean, 
you. I don't know if you ever engaged in the drug scene, but you meet people in the drug world that you would never want to be around in a normal society of people. But that was my only, messing with her really was the only time for years that I had, uh, had sex with a woman. Oh, really? Yeah, I had never had sex with a woman since 2000. Oh, wow. So when you were younger, who was your first sexual partner? Was it a man when you were younger? Was it a woman? Was it a girl? Yeah, was... Right. I was 12 years old. It was a man. Oh, really? Was that when here I in was Omaha? Man, it was all man. Yeah. Oh, wow. And and how do you feel about that? Is it Was it wanted? Was it I not wanted? Great. Wonderful. It was the best experience of my life. Really? He hooked me in. He hooked me in and I enjoyed it. So it wasn't like a predatorial situation, even though you were young. It wasn't like force. Was it like? Heck no, 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 no. Listen, I knew he was gay. Okay. He was in the drill team. Okay. You know how we had the drill team? Yeah, I remember the drill team. Yeah, he was in the drill team, and uh, so I knew it. Yeah, I mean, they used to. Uh, I used to be in practice and stuff. I don't know if you know. Uh, where uh, Claire Mathis Church is, but anyway, it was across the street from my grandma's house on Evans Street. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. in the back of Claire Mathis Church, you used to live over there by Claire Mathis. Did you live? Right yeah, the back I remember of- that. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, they used to practice in a little uh, parking area back there. You talking about by the basketball room? Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Remember yep. that room? Yep, I remember now. Yeah, so. Yeah, I knew he was gay. It was no force thing, please. I liked it. He had to, well, not to be vulgar, but he had a big butt, and I was, he was feminine, and I liked it. <laughs> I don't like men, and I like feminine men. Oh, okay. So are you like the manly I'm man? man now. I'm not, hold you, up. We have 60 seconds remaining. I'm not going to go woman in no relationship now. <laughs> hold up, killer. You see the wrong impression. Okay, so you the man. You the man in the relationship. You better know it. All right, too. I got, I got you. <laughs> well, our call is about to end. Are you going to call me back? Or yeah, do you, do... I'll call you back tomorrow. Okay. Well, I'm. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.